Hey there ladies and gents, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Drew and these are my headphones which I am replacing over here because they were bothering me when they were over there. So, today I'm going to do a little bit more of an unconventional video and by that I mean I don't have my iPad in front of me and I'm kind of just going to talk off the cuff, not scripted, coming from the heart, one take hopefully or maybe I'll do a couple cuts but Pretty much just one take and just wanted to kind of talk and be real with you guys for a little bit especially for some of you guys that i know who watch or maybe of a certain age back we'll get into that in a second but this evening i was sitting with my sister at dinner and my sister is one of the most intelligent young ladies i know and she's decided to go off and pursue a degree in human rights a master's in human rights which is amazing to me and we were talking about some of the issues that she really she was passionate about with human rights, things like torture and so many other things um, that just aren't decent, like people not being decent to other human beings. And we started to talk about it, and I was just so emblazoned with passion um, because she she was just lit. She was um, well, not lit because she was drunk or anything like that, but she was lit because she just had this fire of her, this fervor in her, and this passion for. Her human rights and it really got me thinking it's like what is what human rights do I value most and what do I want to make important in my life or what do I want to strive for what I want to make my my life's work be and I got to thinking we were discussing about it and everything like that and what I came up with was something that I kind of said aha maybe I should make a video out of this and I have a tendency to ramble when I don't have a script in front of me hence why I usually script out my episodes before I record them so apologies if this in advance if this video runs long but feel free to leave it in like another tab while you're working on other stuff it's kind of a talking head video anyway there's not much action going on here but I just wanted to dive into some of my thoughts and what I'm passionate about and how I kind of came to the conclusion of what I want my life to be about and what I want my purpose to be and share that with you guys so if you're wondering about what you want to do with your life or what you want your life's work to be what you want your passions to be or what mark you want to leave on the world, especially for you younger guys and gals who are maybe in high school or just starting college, you're dealing with a lot of the questions of what do I do with my life. This video is for you guys and well that's in more than one regard. We're not just going to talk about purpose but we're going to talk about some real issues that are plaguing society today and affecting you guys and how some of us are trying very very hard to fix those issues and if we all get together at the same time and do some good then we can really do a lot of good and enact a lot of change together so what i'm getting at i guess i should start with a story so i went to school or when i was in high school i remember just how stressful that was for me and you know figuring out if I wanted to be in this club or I wanted to be in that club how I was going to get all my credits to graduate what college I was going to go to what I was going to do with my life getting through relationships that sort of thing wondering if my girlfriend was still going to have feelings for me the next day and just that kind of day-to-day -day teenager stuff and that I know kind of took a toll on me in some ways. I remember my junior year of high school, I was not suicidal, but I had some thoughts about it, I guess you could say. Thankfully, I got help and I got over it. And that was a remarkable time in my life because I met so many amazing people and I had time to get the help that I needed and got better. So it always gets better. And that's something that I've learned recently with my other mental health issues that I've been working through as well. But I just think about the anxiety and all the things that I thought about and all the worries that I had as a combination of being just a hormonal teenager and having to face a lot of really existential or really deep questions when my brain was still developing and you know still trying to make sense of the world around me, let alone make decisions about what I wanted to do with my life and what I wanted my life work to be. But Nowadays, it's so very tragic because we watch the news a lot, and I remember at the start of this year and late last year, these tragic, tragic, and I, I guess I should put a trigger warning here at the beginning, um, we will be talking a little bit about school shootings and violence, student violence, things like that. Um, so if that, fair warning, if that gives you guys the chills or gives you anxiety, that's totally fine. Um, 
It is a very, very serious topic. It is one that hits to the core and makes you ask a lot of very, very dark questions like how could anybody do this to somebody else? And so rightfully so, if that's something that triggers you, no, no harm, no shame, no foul. If you need a minute or you need to tab away from this video, that's totally fine. I'll give you a couple seconds here. But, okay, if you're still with me, getting into that, uh, you, I remember watching the news, like, the end of last year, start of this year, it's 2018 now, and there was just so many of these horrible, horrible school shootings, and week by week, it almost to clockwork, you could anticipate that there was, you know, just as we were getting or making sense of one school shooting, another one would happen, and another one, or another act of violence, another horrible, egregious, terrible thing would happen. And the reason I led off with the story about what it was like for me growing up in high school is because I know all of the anxiety that I had and all of the stress that I was dealing with at that point in my life. And now a lot of you guys and gals are having to go to school worried about if somebody's going to harm you or if somebody's going to do something horrible or something horrible to your friends or there's going to be a huge act of violence. And a fun fact, I, when I went to high school, I went to a school in McKinney, which is a city like about 30 minutes north of Dallas, and there's three high schools in McKinney. I went to one of them. And then on the last day of school this year, at one of the high schools, a kid actually committed suicide on school property. And it was horrible. It was like the last day of school. I remember reading Facebook posts. Parents were just outraged because they still had to have their kids go to finals the next week. And I agreed with them. I, I, t I definitely agreed with the parents in that regard because coming off the heels of something like that, even if you didn't know the kid, to know that something like that happened in your school is just monumentally traumatizing and making sense of that as a adolescent or as a teen getting just trying to get through trying to get good grades trying to maintain your GPA to get into college I don't think that we should be asking that of you guys and so if you're a high schooler or if you're just starting college you're at that critical age where a lot of these acts of violence are happening I don't blame you at all if you feel scared to go to school sometimes. I would be too. In fact, I think you guys would handle it a lot better than I would. And so that's when it really hit me and I kind of put the pieces together here at dinner this evening and hence why I'm making this video that we don't talk about mental health nearly as much as we should in schools. and. I don't think anybody should expect you guys to have to deal with that level of stress, that level of anxiety, not just trying to figure out your life, but worrying if your life is going to even continue, that there's this ever-looming threat or this ever-present threat. And for some of you guys, it may not be that way. I may be completely misreading, but I know some of you guys may be worrying about that or it may be itching in the back of your mind. It's like, hey, if this could happen somewhere else, what's not to keep it to happen here? And I want to blanket it by saying 90% sure that it's not going to happen. You have nothing to worry about. You'll live out your days happily and safely. You'll get to walk your stage. You'll go off to college or join the military or start working. And you will live a happy and fulfilled life. And I believe that 100%. I, I hope that for all of you. And I know that for a great many of you, that will be the end goal. And that will be the end result, I should say. You will go and live prosperously and everything will be totally fine. But to those who worry about it, I want to first and foremost say that it's okay to worry and it's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be sad, angry, depressed. Like, it's okay to have feelings. That was one thing that when I was growing up with Asperger's, it was really, really hard to make sense of, you know, what I was feeling and that sort of thing. And I, thankfully I had amazing therapists who helped me to basically say that exact thing. I had one incredible therapist when I was younger named Brian, and that was his big tagline. It's okay to have feelings. It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to be excited. These are all things that we feel throughout the course of our day. And I think that if a lot of the time we're taught to be conformist and we're in school we're taught to find this group or find this crowd that you fit in with find a sense of identity by identifying with a larger group but 
we don't often time we don't often take the time to have the self care the self love to say me as an individual I have needs the group has needs and I have a need to be in a group and I have a need to feel a sense of community but I have needs too I have emotional needs I have spiritual needs I have physical needs and it's not worth you sacrificing those to appease the needs of the the community I guess you can say and so in that conformist mentality where everybody is you should fit into this group you should fit in that group if you aren't part of a group then you must somehow be different or you're not thinking the right way or you're not trying hard enough when in reality it could just be that you don't fit in with any one group and that's fine that shows that you're an individual most of the time the greatest heroes of our generations have never fit in with the traditional groups do you think gandhi or mandela or steve jobs or those guys um any of those big big guys that we remember or guys and women um they probably at one point or another didn't fit in with the groups in high school or some sort of group and that's okay and that's okay because you are an individual, and I guess that's like one of the main themes is you have, you're an individual with needs, emotional, physical, and spiritual. And getting back to the idea of anxiety, if we start preaching conformity, which we traditionally do in schools, it's always the case that, oh, I'm anxious or I'm feeling nervous. I must be the only one that's having these thoughts, so therefore I am the problem. Or the way that I'm thinking is wrong the way that I am viewing the world is wrong. And there are some certain preservations where we should evaluate that objectively, but if you're just feeling anxious, you're worried because you get fed from the news this horrible narrative that if it bleeds, it leads, and we have to get the most sensationalized, the most overly dramatic, the most horrible images and narrative so that we can draw people in to watch our news station, you watch that sort of thing and you feel anxious, then yeah, that's kind of the point. They are feeding on your anxiety. And it's okay to be anxious, it's okay to be scared, and it's okay to feel these ways. It's a very real threat. We've seen it time and time again. That's why these horrible things keep happening and they keep getting attention is because that is a very real threat. But it's slight, it's just ever so present, but it gets blown out of proportion usually and it gets made into this big snowball of horrible dastardly narrative and it's no wonder that you get scared or anxious and that's totally fine that's the big theory i guess that's the big theme behind this video is it is okay to have thoughts it's okay to be anxious it's okay to be sad it's okay to have no effing clue what is going on around you because everybody feels that way at one point or another. The person sitting right next to you, your friends, your family, no matter how well composed they may seem, what's going on in here is no different than what's going on in your head when it comes to anxiety and depression. Everybody has feelings of anxiety, everybody has feelings of depression to some extent, and you can't blame yourself for that. Don't feel bad, don't feel horrible, you are feeling a normal reaction and that is a reaction to danger that you see all the time and probably gets blown out of proportion and for the longest time we haven't been doing you guys justice and i don't want to speak for everybody in my generation or any other generation but i feel it's my calling and one of the big points and one of the things that i want to devote my life to is making sure that mental health is a thing that we talk about either through my YouTube channel, through being an activist, that sort of thing. But I think it is most important to a lot of you guys who are in middle high school and college because that's the time when your brain is doing the most thinking, the most forming, and that sort of thing. And we're always preaching conformity. We're preaching that if you think, or if you're anxious, or you're nervous, or that sort of thing, or you're depressed, or you're sad, and you have no idea why, it must be a problem with you. And we don't teach kids how to cope. We don't teach them how to recognize how and what they're feeling. And we don't teach them how to properly navigate the mental landscape that's up here. And it's a lot like a car. If you have a Tesla Model S that can do zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds, a powerful, powerful machine that can go really, really fast, by virtue of it being a precision machine, you need to keep it well-maintained. You need to, you know, make sure it's got good tires, make sure it's got good brake pads, everything is spick and span. 
you need to take care of that car in order for it to go fast and for it to accomplish all that it is meant to do. Your brain is exactly the same way. Your brain is this beautiful, magnificent machine that can conjure up these amazing things and do all these amazing, wonderful, spectacular deeds for you. But by that same token, it can also sometimes give you a little bit of a rough thought or sometimes it'll make you think some kind of rough things or maybe it'll give you a hyper-awareness to a certain danger that may or may not be present. And that's okay. But the fact of the matter is you need to maintain your, your brain and you need to be cognizant of mental health, pun intended. And so every one of us has a beautiful brain. Everybody has a beautiful mind. And at one point or another, some things happen to us, but you can work through it. And that's what my life's work is going to be. I want to make sure that kids like high schoolers, college age kids, really anybody, if you're feeling anxious, you're feeling depressed, you just don't know what is going on inside of your head, you deserve to know how to work with that. You deserve to know how to cope. And like I said, I feel like our generation and the generations that came before us have done you a disservice. We have not taught coping mechanisms. We haven't taught cognitive distortions. We haven't taught mental health as a topic in high school. We teach to be macho and verbose and tough your way through it and all that sort of thing. And that is wrong. Plain and simple to me, that is wrong. We are doing you a disservice if we don't teach you those things. So if you're looking for purpose and you're looking for just something to do with your life, or maybe you don't know what you want to do professionally, you don't know what you want your career to be, what you want to do to bring home bread on the table, look at the idea of human rights or the idea of something that you value. So for me it's mental health because I've been through a couple of mental health recoveries myself and um, I want to make sure that the suffering that I've gone through that I use that as a tool to help others from suffering the way that I did or if they are suffering to help them to make more sense of it if that makes sense and that sort of passion or that sort of wanting to do that came out of trauma or came out of me having to sit on my couch anxious as all get out not being able to move or barely being able to move or think without ruminating about a certain thing or letting anxiety basically hijack my brain I would never wish that on anybody and I want to make it my life's work or my life's purpose to make sure that that never happens to other people or if it is happening to other people that I can help them in some way or I can make them suffer less and so like I said I started off this video with if you're looking for purpose if you're looking for a meaning to your life if you're looking for some sort of altruistic motive to help you get through day to day look at your life and think about all the great things that have happened to you all the maybe not so great things that have happened to you pick any one point in your life where you were just beside yourself with emotion. You were elated beyond belief or you were depressed and under your blankets and not wanting to get out of bed because you were sad and you just don't know why. Look at those moments and look at how strong you were and look at how amazing things turned out after it because you were strong. And inevitably that strength molds you into something great. It molds you into something good and it molds you into something that can do something before you were maybe anxious or depressed or you had something horrible happen to you and now you're making your sense of it but that was a previous you that died when you had that thing happen to you or you had that anxious break or you had that day of depression where you said I can't live like this I need to do something better when you made that conscious decision you forgave yourself for what happened you committed basically the greatest act of empathy that anybody can do and that is to say what happened to me was terrible but I'm still okay I'm going to forgive myself first and foremost for what happened it may have been my fault it may not have been but ultimately the way that I rectify that and the way that I make my life better the way that I come out of this stronger is by making sure that I do my best to make sure that that doesn't happen to somebody else or that doesn't or if it is happening to somebody else I can help or I can basically use my experience to aid somebody else so that they don't suffer as much as I do. And so that's where you find purpose. And for all of you who are in high school, for all of you who are in college and you're worrying 
that not only will I make this great, not only will, you know, my boyfriend or girlfriend love me the next day, will, or am I going to make first chair in band? Am I going to get a solo in choir? Am I going to make starting for whatever sport I play? Whatever you're worried about, and then add on top of that the ever-looming danger that something might happen to you at school or that sort of thing, all of that, you have my admiration. I, like I said, I don't think I could have gone through high school thinking about those sort of things. And for all of you that are doing it right here and right now, despite all that anxiety and all that fear, you have my respect. I, I admire the heck out of you guys. I wish you all the best. And you guys are going to do so much more than the generations that have come past. I'm, I'm getting up there in years. I'm 24 now. And I know that sounds like super duper young, but I was born in 94 and so kids that were born in 2000, six years after I was born, are now driving and getting their licenses and graduating high school. So that really put it into perspective to me that I'm not just the lowest generation anymore. There's another generation now that's coming up as well. And you guys are gonna rock the show. And for all of you millennials, those of you who are with me in the 89 to 99 crowd, we're gonna rock the show too. And for those of you guys who came before us, you still got time, we can make it happen. The human race, we're a great bunch and we can rock the show and each one of us has a little bit to give. You uh, Gen Tenors, I guess they call them, Generation 10, because you guys are coming up in the 2010s. Whatever you guys are called, those of you born after 2000. Um, like I said, I admire the heck out of you guys. You guys are dealing with and sorting out and figuring out things that I never had to figure out when I was in high school or college. And for all of us millennials, we're doing amazing things. A lot of us are getting out of college and going and changing the world, which is amazing. And for all of those generations that came behind us, they've already accomplished so many great things. So it's time for us to all come together and kind of say, hey, yeah, this mental health thing, we need to talk about it more because kids are going to school and they're becoming anxious. And the horrible fact of the matter is some of them are literally killing themselves and that cannot happen. So that's my, my story of how I found purpose. And I guess this is a public declaration of my purpose to make it my life's work to make sure that we talk about mental health a lot more, especially in schools, because we don't teach mental health nearly as much as we should in schools. And all that's to say, for those of you who are going through stuff, going through anxiety, going through depression, whatever, it's okay. It gets better. I promise you it does. I've been through this up and down before, and I may not have even touched the very surface of what you're going through right now. I, my bottom line is maybe just the top and you're way down here. That's fine. It's not a game of comparison. Hemingway once said, and this is one of my favorite quotes, it's actually on my wall right here. There's nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. That's, that wraps it up kind of perfectly. I kind of want to end on that note. So don't play a game of comparison. It gets better. You will come back way better, stronger, faster, and better than this. Um, you can beat mental health. Don't be afraid to ask help. And remember, it is okay to have feelings. It's okay to have anxiety. It's okay to have depression. It's okay to have these sort of feelings because when you feel you become human and humans can do good things for other humans. It's when you get disconnected that weird stuff starts to happen. But be thankful that you have these emotions, work through them, they will make you stronger. And in the end, you'll have my respect and you all are gonna do amazing things. So to wrap up the video, I just wanna end on that note. You guys are on the right road. I'm so sorry that we don't teach mental health as much as we should, but I am making my life's work to change that. I hope you find some purpose, that, that being your purpose or something else, that you can make your life's work and we can all get together and do some good stuff for the human race. Lastly, as we always do, we're gonna end in the traditional way. And that was by me saying that, always remember that you were wanted, you were loved and appreciated. You have a special talent that nobody else has, and the world is waiting on you to bring it out. So muster a little courage, go out into the world, and change it. That's what the world's waiting on. You.